with some of you guys after. But right now, I'm looking forward to worshiping with you. We're going to start off with a song, Graves into Gardens. Lift your voices with me as we sing about how God turns things that are literally dead, graves, things that literally have dead men's bones inside, into beautiful gardens. This is what he can do with my life and your life. Let's sing it out. I've searched the world. Ready? I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. But then what happened? Then you came along and put me back together. Beach, California, which is not a place, bad place to do anything. Um, so those of you who are from Southern California, from Huntington Beach, you have no idea 
It's cold other places, okay? Just, you just need to remember that, okay? But we're so glad you guys are here with us today. Uh, if you haven't already, and if this is your first time, we want to give you a gift. And so after our gathering here at the end, we're going to have this awesome after party with Free Boba. We'll have some live music and uh, just an awesome opportunity to hang out, meet some new people, make some new friendships. And uh, we're, we're going to be really excited for that. But after, well, during that, make sure and grab and cop one of those new uh, t-shirts that we have, which is pretty awesome. Uh, how many of you guys got a t-shirt already? Raise your hand. Yoo! Yeah. Hey, and we also, uh, we had a little Instagram competition uh, this last week. Do I get some background music, boys, back there? I feel like I'm better when I got background music, <laughs> you know? We can drum roll. There we go. Hey, so one of the one, we had an Instagram competition this last week of people uh, sharing our stuff, let, getting, let everybody know what's going on. Um, and I actually have the winner of the person who's going to win a free shirt right now. And the winner of the, of the person who is going to win the shirt is Kaylin Parker. Kaylin. I think I saw you raise your hand that you bought one already. We're going to get you another one, you know? One for your husband, you know? It'll be great. But listen, we want to we want to encourage you guys to follow us on social media. We got a lot of fun stuff going on. We'll have giveaways, we'll have other things. But if that's the best way to keep up to date on what's happening here at Young Adults, is just to follow every all of us on Instagram. We have another slide with all of our stuff on it. Um, but uh, yeah, we have uh, our, our CPHBYA, our Facebook that no one gets on, and then our YouTube. Uh, so we'd love for you to be a part of that. And uh, the other thing that we skipped over here just a second ago is this happens on Tuesday nights where we all gather together. And uh, but one thing that we want to make sure that you guys are aware of is, you know, we, we know it's important to gather together, but we know it's really important to break off into a little bit smaller groups. And it's here where we can really kind of, you know, explore what it means to follow Jesus on like a personal level with the people in your same age group. And uh, we're just we're just so excited about that. If you're not in a group, then I'll encourage you to, to jump in and be a part. We have, uh, if you go to our, our website, crosspointhb.com slash groups, and search Young Adults, we'll be able to hook you up with a group. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about my group meets on Thursday nights with Zeke. Woo! If you're a guy and want to hang out with us on Thursday, uh, come to that. But we have a couple more groups that meets uh, all throughout the week. So really excited about that. Hey, at this time, I want you guys to stand up. We're going to do what we call the Minute Mingle. So I want you to find some people around you that you don't know. I want you to ask them their name, where they go to school, or if they work, and their favorite ice cream flavor. All right? That's what we're going to do. So everyone stand up with me right now. Yeah, there will be a quiz. You go ahead and find some people. Give the people a handshake, high five, and a hug.
child of the King of Kings, the King above all authority. And right now at a time where authority can be questionable in our government, in our lives, like just being young adults, finding out what authority we're supposed to listen to, we know there's one authority that is above all. And I pray that tonight we remember who this authority is. And this is Jesus Christ. He is your authority. But more than him being an authority, he's an authority that loved you enough. And this song talks about a love from a king of kings who came down to this earth to die for your sins and for mine. Jason, sing this song.
guide us as we launch this new gathering, Lord, and I pray that you would be with these souls here tonight, that you would encourage them, but that you would also convict them, Lord, and so that we would go out from this place changed. We thank you so much, God, for everything you've done for us. You are so, so good. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. What's up, everybody? Good to see you guys again. We're so pumped again to be here. Uh, you guys are here for like a special night. This is like the first of the young adult gatherings that we're going to be doing here at Crosspoint. And man, I'm so pumped you guys are here. I'm glad you guys are excited too. Um, hey, and it's our it's our hope that you feel welcome and wanted today. It's our hope that this could be a community where you could find friends. It's our hope that this is a place where you would be able to grow in your relationship with Jesus. And uh, man, that's our prayer, that we all could leave this place different than how we came in because of the relationships and because of the Lord doing his work. And so I'm excited that we're starting off today. Um, and I have a question for you first. Um, how many of you guys think it's really funny when somebody completely misuses and a, a, a thing or a product or a machine like I there's a whole sub like genre of fail videos of people like misusing workout equipment have you guys seen these things it's it's unbelievable some planet fitness you know like when somebody's like trying to do this thing but they put their legs in it and they're like doing something weird like that you know like it's just people are like this clearly not how I don't know what they think I don't know where they thought that you know like I, I love it I love seeing these things and I was this week I was reading about a couple and uh, I could, I just, I, I could not get over what I read, guys. And I'm gonna read a couple to you right now. But before we do, you're just gonna like, I just need to remind you, these are real people, okay? These are real people doing real things that I don't know how they, I don't know how, they, I don't know how they live, to be honest with you. I don't know what's going on. But uh, the first thing I wanna let you guys know, and I'll put it up on the screen too. Uh, this, this one said, it said, my wife once watched a girl at her work stick a ball of aluminum foil in the microwave with her instant ramen. When asked why, she said, oh, the sparks are just because it's heating up faster. <laughs> As if that were common knowledge. There's like, well, duh. This is, yeah. Like, what? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Here's the other one. I used to live two doors down from a neighbor who would often vacuum her grass after it was mowed. What? What are we doing here? Okay, this, this other one's good too. Uh, we weren't allowed hot plates or microwaves in my college dorm, so one of the girls on my floor would cook bacon with her hair straightener. Listen, I don't know what's grosser to have, you know, heat, like to have, to eat bacon that was on your hair, or to have that thing on your hair that was covered in bacon. Like, I don't think there's a win here. You know, I, don't, I really don't think there's a win. And I, I was reading these, and I'm like, man, these are hilarious, but why are these so funny to us? Like, I think all of us can realize the ridiculousness of the thing that we just saw. And I think the reason is because we clearly understand the purpose of those three things that we just, we just talked about. Because, and why do we know, why can we understand what the purpose of those things? It's because the creator of those products sent out the, the message of how to use these products. Like, the creator of the vacuum never planned for it to go on a lawn. You know, just that wasn't something he was more sticking inside uh, with that guy. Uh, the creator of the hair straightener was never intended to be a kitchen utensil and a cooking utensil. And the, the creator of the microwave, it did not create it to spark when it got, you know, it had micro explosions uh, when things were heating up faster. That's just not how it worked. And, you know, I think it's interesting, and I love these things, and they're silly, but I, I think it's interesting because uh, sometimes... Like, we, we know that we don't look at the users of the products to determine its purpose and use. We look at the person who created the product to understand its purpose and its use. You know, we, we get the purpose of something from the person who designed it. You know, I, uh, for those of you who don't know, I grew up in the Philippines. My parents are missionary kids. And, or my parents are missionary. My parents were missionary kids. They also were growing up in the Philippines. But I was a missionary kid growing up in the Philippines. 
And what that meant was I spent a lot of time on planes. And so uh, we would come back and forth from the States a lot. And um, one, of the, one of the planes that we flew on a lot was the 747. Now, the 747 is like this incredible feat of engineering. Um, recently, I think they retired the 747, but let me tell you about the glorious past of the 747. Do you know the 747, it housed during its lifetime over three and a half billion people. That's like more than half the world's population. Do you know that a 747, the, the, the landing gears, like the tires, are filled with nitrogen to prevent explosion from tire burnouts when it's landing and taking off? Do you know that it would take Usain Bolt seven seconds to run from the tip of the plane to the tail of the plane? That's, that's big, guys. If you don't know Usain Bolt, he's fast, okay? He is so fast. And the thing about the 747, it was like designed to fly 35 to 45,000 feet in the air. And they're just like a marvel of engineering, and it's, it's pretty incredible. But imagine with me that there was a little baby 747, and the, this 747's mom never told him all the things that he could be. Like, can you imagine? So like this, he just, he just lived, he lived his life never knowing what he was capable of. I imagine this little baby 747 would go to his mama 747, and he would say things just like, mom, I don't understand, probably during middle school, because that's awkward time for everybody. And he'd just be like, hey, mom, I don't understand uh, what's going on. Like, I don't get, like, I have these big wings. I can't really maneuver, at the, like, very well. Like, my classmates at the airport school, like tow truck and golf cart, they can do whatever they want. They're going around, zipping around, but I have to wait for, like, the humans with this. You know, I have to wait for that going on. Um, and like, imagine, like the frustration this little baby 747 must felt. And imagine this, this little baby 747, he never, he never knew what his purpose was, and he grew up to be a young adult 747 and an adult 747. And can you imagine like the angst that this 747 must feel if all he was good for and all he was doing was to taxi people from one gate to another gate? Now, obviously, that's ridiculous. 747s are not mom and dads, but um, and they, don't, they don't fall in love and have little baby 747s. But we know that it's crazy. It's weird to think about a 747 with identity crisis because you look at it and it's clearly identified because of, of who made it, what is going on, what the purpose of this machine is. It, you know, it's not supposed to just taxi people. It has wheels, but its purpose is not to taxi people from one gate to the other gate. The purpose of the 747 is to fill it up with people and have it soar in the air. Now listen, this is, again, this is a ridiculous concept, but yet the majority of people living right now, they walk around not knowing exactly why they were created and what their mission is in life and what they were designed to do. You know, my guess that even people in this room, if you, know, you may have the answers to the question of like, what's your five-year plan? What school are you going to go to? What are you going to do after college? What, what are you trying to do right now? You may have those questions figured out. But if I were to ask you, like, hey, what's your purpose? What's your purpose in life? That question may be a little fuzzy. So over the next several weeks, what we're going to do is we're going to tackle this question, what on earth am I here for? Because right now, guys, this is the time. This is the time for us to, to settle these things. Because how many of you guys know people who, uh, who have lived a long life but never totally figured out what their purpose is? Have you guys felt that like angst like deep in your soul of like, I, I just don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I don't know exactly uh, what, what, I'm, you know, what, what was I created. I don't, I don't know. Have you guys felt that angst? I think this angst becomes a little bit more pronounced when we get to be young adult. When things in life start to be your decision every single time. You move out of your parents' house, you're making your own decisions for the very first time. You're, you know, you have to, you know, no one's forcing you to do anything. You are the person in charge of your life. And it's a time where you have to like really come to terms with what you believe and why you believe it. And what is your purpose? What were you here created to do? And so for the next few weeks, we're going to be answering this question, what on earth am I here for? And tonight, I want to talk about this, this, I, this idea of purpose. Why, why are we here? What are, what are we created to do? And listen, I can't really tell you about, like, like I, I'm not leading you to a purpose that I think you should have, because I don't have the authority to do that. But what I can do is I can point out that you were created by a God in heaven who loves you. 
who has created you intentionally, on purpose. He's created you with purpose. He has a plan for you. He has good things for you. And I want to let you know that we have, we have God's word that would guide us and direct us and reveal God's purpose to us. Because I think sometimes we think that we have to decipher a lot of things about God's word. And we have to figure out, what, what am I here for? It is written plainly for us to see. It is written plainly for us to see. And so today, uh, tonight, I want to bring your, to, I want to bring your attention to an invitation that Jesus extended to a group of men in the Gospel of John, or in the Gospel of Matthew. So if you have have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. And after this encounter, what what happened here is Jesus has just began his earthly ministry. And he started to, you know, he he just got back from the the wilderness where the the, the devil tempted him. And he's back and he's he's on the move. And we get to and we get to these people that he encounters. And whenever whenever Jesus encountered these men and he extends the invitation, these men accept it. And their whole lives are changed. And because these men, this men accepted the invitation of Jesus that he's actually extending to you today, the entire world was changed because of what they did. And so this is what we read in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. It says, while walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for their fishermen. And he said this to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and they followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his older brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and they followed him. So today what we're going to talk about is the simple invitation of Jesus. And it's simple yet so transforming if we actually do this. And I'll look at three things that we see from this invitation of Jesus that I really do believe this. If you want purpose in your life, if you want meaning, if you want a mission, then Jesus actually extends it to us in this invitation to follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. The first thing that I believe that you need to do in order to find your purpose is you need to find Jesus. You need to find Jesus. And of course, that sounds like something that the pastor would say. That's something you hear all the time, I'm sure. But in order to actually have purpose from the person who created you, I think it would be a good start to at least meet that person. To extend, you know, to the, the, you know, to the question that I want to ask you is when was the moment that you met Jesus? When was that time for you that you turned from your sins and you trusted God with everything? Where was it for you? Was it at church? Was it did a friend talk to you? Did the parent talk to you? Was it at the beach? Was it in the car? Was it over a period of time? Like what, what motivated you to want to make the decision to follow Jesus? These are the things that we have to ask. And you may be tempted to skip, you know, okay, what's the extra, let's, let's go to the next one. I kind of got this uh, on, we, we get this one. Um, but the question is, for those of you who want to like skip on to the next thing, like can you explain it? Like can you explain your motivations and reasons why you wanted to follow Jesus in the first place? Do you know why, why you follow him? Would you be able to articulate that to somebody else? Why are you a Christian? Why are you trying to be a disciple of Jesus? You know, I talk to people sometimes and they say things just like, you know, I've always been a Christian, kind of grew up Christian. Um, it's, been, it's, it's just something that I've done. I've been, I was born a Christian, was, you know, went to school a Christian. You know, I'm a Christian now. And I, I think I get what they're saying, but it doesn't totally make sense to me because that's like me saying, you know, I've always kind of been married to Kyla. I've always been married to Kyla. I was born married to Kyla. I was, uh, went to middle school married to Kyla. Uh, we were, you know, we just kind of, we did our thing. Uh, you know, then when, uh, then we actually got, you know, we were married then. But that's not the reason I'm married to Kyla. The reason I'm married to Kyla is because on December 29th in Pendleton, Indiana, on a cold, snowy day, she walked down the aisle, met me here at the stage, and we committed to each other, and we said no one else for the rest of our lives. That was the moment that Kyla and I got married. And I think for a lot of us, for, and I, I heard this said but John, one of the guys here, he said that God doesn't have grandchildren. God only has children. That meaning like just because your parents are Christians does not mean that you get grandfathered in. You have to be the one to make the decision to follow Jesus 
on your own. And if you want to live in this purpose that God gives you, then you have, like, let's, let's get real. Let's, like, do I know Jesus? Have I made that decision? If, is it fuzzy for me? And I think maybe if your purpose is kind of fuzzy, maybe the reason your purpose is kind of fuzzy is because your story is kind of fuzzy. And so today, maybe you should begin the process of just asking, like, God, what? Can you help me like refine my story? Like, how do I how do I even articulate this? How, would I be able to tell anybody this? If you want to find your purpose, then you need to make Jesus the Lord of your life. You got to find Jesus. Number two, the things we get out of here is you need to know Jesus. You need to know Jesus. Follow me, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You know, my daughter Eleanor. I think she's here right now. Uh, she might have just left because she might have been crying or something. Uh, this is her. And uh, I heard a stat one time that if you show a picture of your family, your audience will like you better. And so I'll, I'll show that anytime I can show a picture of her, I'm happy to do that. And she's a year and a half old now. And there's so many things that I'm learning about being a parent. Um, so many things that, there, you know, surprises along the way. But by far, the number one thing that I'm blown away by being a parent is how much I love spending time with Eleanor. I knew I would love her. But the, the, like, if I, the thing that I can't even explain to you of how much I just, get, I, get so, I just get so excited is to just delight in Eleanor and be with Eleanor. And like, I, I'm like a weird dad. Like I sing, I make up songs over here. I just like, I'm just like, I love to sing to her. I love to see her like explore life and the, the look on her face when someone makes a funny face. Like I just love it. I love delighting in Eleanor. Anything she does, I'm in. I, I love it so much. Like, I make up my songs. They're always the tune of Christmas songs, by the way. I don't know how that happened. It's like, I think you're really sweet. I think you're really cute. I love baby girl. Like, I don't know what it is. But that's, that's one of the ones I sing all the time when I change your diaper. Um, but here's the thing. Do you know that God looks at you the way I look at my Eleanor? but even in a bigger and a better way. I just so desperately want to be with her. I delight in her. I want to know her. I want her to know me. And this is what God wants to do with you. And I think so, so often when we, when we think about knowing Jesus and following Jesus and trying to spend time with Jesus, a lot of it kind of looks on our end of the street. We're like, okay, I've got to do this. But so often I think the reason some of us have a hard time understanding and like trying to, to you know, spend more time with Jesus, to know him better, to be with him, to follow him, um, is because we don't really understand the other side. God loves you. He's, he delights in you. He wants to be with you so much. Like he sings songs over you. He is for you. Everything the, the, he just he loves you so, so much. You hear that all the time, but it, it, just, it hit me differently now that I have a daughter. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just a small percentage of how much God loves me. And if you're here today, and maybe you've kind of been strong-arming God away, you're like, I don't know, I, like, I, I don't even know if God would want me. Just hear that God is so, wants to be with you, that he, he delights in you, and he, he, he sings songs over you, he's for your good, he wants to transform you to be more whole and holy so that he does not, that there's no limit to the capacity of blessing that he wants for you. In Zephaniah 3.17, it says, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save you. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love and he will exalt over you with loud singing. When you, when you know Jesus, when you follow Jesus, it will transform you. It will transform you. He will change you. He will, he will kind of mold you and make you into a completely different person. The person that you were always intended to be before sin entered into the scene. He will transform you. In Romans 10, 12, it kind of gives us a different picture. It says, it says do not conform the, to the pattern of the world. Right now, we are, as, as a people, we are so drifted to sin. We want to conform our lives to the pattern of the world. And God is saying, please stop. 
because that is going to hurt you. That is going to limit the amount of good that can happen in your life. And every time you sin, it violates my law. It separates us. Like, I just want the, what's best for you. I want you to be whole and holy. Conform yourself to me. It says, it says this, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, and which is good, pleasing, and perfect will. When you begin to walk with Jesus, when you begin to know Jesus, when, you, when you're just around him a lot because he loves you so much and delights in you and just wants to be with you, it will change you. It will give you a new perspective. It will give you, it will mold you by the power of the Holy Spirit, it will shape you and to put you in a position to be able to receive this purpose that can only come from the person that created you. Listen, your purpose isn't derived from an occupation or something that you do. It is derived from the transformation that takes place inside of you when you begin to know Jesus. And some sometimes we can like try to go to small group for a little bit and like try to you know really develop your spiritual disciplines and you just try it for a week and I'm like I don't see any progress. It's not working. Can I just like can I just say like stick with it? Keep going to group. Keep trying. If you miss a bunch of days, get back up. You're good. God just wants to be with you. And the more you spend time with him, the more you will be transformed. So you gotta know Jesus. But first you gotta find Jesus and the last thing he says, you need to share Jesus. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You know, after you spend a lot of time with Jesus, I think the only natural thing that can happen is that you're just so in love with who Jesus is um, that you just, can't, you just can't help but just spill it out, and you have to tell everybody about it. You have to tell anyone and everyone about what's going on in your life. And I think so often, maybe you're here and you're like, I just want to get to the purpose can I, can I just get to the purpose? How do I find the purpose? Can I tell you that, the, that Jesus is not a means to purpose in your life? He himself is your purpose. Being with Jesus, knowing Jesus, being transformed by Jesus is the purpose in life. He is who you want. He is who you need. All these other things that you may be trying does not work. It may, and it may work for a little bit, but that's only just a false thing. It will always fail you in the end. Jesus will never fail you. And if you commit to doing these things, you will discover a brand new transformed self outside of you. And they're going to be, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but it means you're going to progress. And you will feel the sense of peace that comes over you when you live in the purpose that God has called you to live in. And the last thing, when, when we share Jesus, this is what we're trying to do now. You know, tonight we're really excited. This is like the beginning of something brand new. And man, we're, we're so pumped for what God is going to do. And it's our hope that you feel welcome and wanted. It's our hope that you would actually experience who this Jesus is who gives life and purpose. And as a ministry here, our goal is to share Jesus. You know, what we're, what we're trying to do is we're, on Tuesday nights, we're trying to proclaim the, new, the good news of who Jesus is. And in our groups, we're, we're committing to grow together to be more like Jesus you know, we're in our, in our leader track and team training. We will learn how to teach other people about Jesus. And in our, in, when we try to find the one, when we have a spiritual conversation with someone, we are trying to bring light and life to every person that we come into contact with because we have been changed by Jesus. And when we serve people, when we serve in church, and we serve other things, then we will be showing the hands and feet of Jesus. Everything we do is based on knowing who Jesus is. And our mission statement in young adults is to bring light and life to wherever you're at, wherever you go. If you have been changed by Jesus, then you have an opportunity to bring light to whatever classroom that you walk in, to bring life to whatever school you, you're at, every job that you're at, no matter every 24 hour fitness that you're at, no matter where you're at, you have an opportunity to bring light and life. You know, I wanna close with this story. You know, there's this little girl named Donna, and Donna grew up in Detroit um, in the 40s and 50s. And Donna, um, when she was 11 years old, her dad decided to eject. He left the family. And uh, so he left uh, Donna, who was just the only child, and her mom. And her mom really struggled with mental health, and uh, she really couldn't bear the pressures of life. 
And so much so that one night Donna woke up to the smell of gas. And Donna woke up and she realized that her mom had turned on all the gas knobs in all the house of, of everything that you could turn on. And she was hoping that the gas would kill her and her daughter and they'd be done. Donna said she woke up another time to her mom at the base of her bed with a knife to her neck. Like, it was just not a good situation. And one day Donna was walking home from school as she normally did. And she saw a bunch of commotion in her neighborhood. And as she got closer to her house, there was a lot of police and ambulances at her house. And she rushed over and she tried to get through. The policeman stopped her and she goes, this is my house. This is my house. What's going on? And the policeman had to tell her, we had to take your mom to the hospital. She's not well. And he said, do you have anybody you can be with? And she goes, no. My dad left. And so she was all alone. Can you imagine so Donna, she's like a really self-determined uh, young woman. And so she knew that her dad probably was in a motel in walking distance. So she, she decided she was going to walk around to all the different motels in Detroit that she could find and look for her dad. And eventually she found one in the parking lot was the, her dad's car. And she goes, this is it. And so she went up to the front desk and she said, listen, my dad's car is right here. My mom was taken to the hospital. I have nowhere to go. Can you please call him and let him know that Donna is here? And so she picked up the phone and she called the room and she hung up the phone and she said, your dad doesn't want to see you. So here's Donna. All by herself in the greatest time of need. Her dad, her dad said to go, go find one of your aunts to be with him. But Donna, she had an awesome friend that was really good to her. And her friend would just be, she was just, she was great. And she would always invite her to church with her. And she would, she would be like, you got to come with me, you got to come. And Donna would be like, no, I'm not going to come, no, I'm not going to come. Then finally, one day, she came to church with her. And it was for the very first time when she walked through the building of a church that she heard this story that there was a God in heaven who we get to call Father who would never leave them who would never abandon them, who actually paid quite a heavy price for them. And Donna was so taken aback by this message and the story that she gave everything to Jesus that night. She turned from her sin and she began to follow Jesus. And it changed everything about her. Before she was a person with no father, no family, and all of a sudden she was all of a sudden in a family of God. And Donna, just this idea of knowing Jesus became so real to her. He found, she found Jesus. She began to know Jesus. And then she couldn't help but just tell other people about Jesus. And it would, it would just spill out from her. She would tell everybody and everybody. And, this, and she started to feel this like, immense sense of purpose that has all of a sudden come into her life. And so much so, and she was so compelled to continue telling people that she decided, I have to do this with the rest of my life. I have, to, I have to give my entire life to telling people about Jesus. So she went to Bible college. And at Bible college, she met this Iowa farm boy. Couldn't be further different than the, the Detroit girl that she is. And they both, they're like, wait, you love telling people about Jesus? Too? I love telling people about Jesus. And they got married. They had three kids. And then one, they were in ministry. And then they heard that there was a need in Asia for people to come to tell more people about Jesus. And so without, without ever going to the Philippines, they got on a boat with their three kids and they sailed to the Philippines and they began, they, they lived and served their entire lives telling people about Jesus. And the reason I know this story is because Donna's my grandma and Donna would, my grandma, Donna would tell us these stories of how she would tell all these people about Jesus. And when I was out with her, every place we would go, it would, when I was a little kid, she would always stop the waiter and waitresses and be like, do you, know, do you know God? I want to tell you about what's going on with Jesus. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, grandma, can you get it together for one second? Oh, it's so embarrassing. Stop it. But she could not help but do this. And because of this, our family is forever changed. Because the purpose that she discovered as, as an 11-year-old girl in Detroit because of an in invitation to a friend, the generations and the ripple effects are forever changed. She found purpose. She found Jesus. 
And one thing I want to point your attention to is I think sometimes we can look at the story and hear one person who found Jesus and found their purpose. But can I tell you this story is really about two people who lived in their purpose. And it was my grandma and my grandma's friend. My grandma's friend did not become a missionary. But she was used exponentially to make, to bring light and life to her friend Donna. And it changed the course of her life. And when I get to heaven, I cannot wait to find this lady. I don't know her name, but I, I'm, I'm, hopefully in heaven there's like a directory or something. I can find that. Uh, but I cannot wait to go find this woman and to give her a hug and say, thank you. Because you lived in your purpose, my family was able to find Jesus and to find our purpose. Because purpose only comes from the person that created you. You can't find it anywhere else. You can only find it in Jesus. And so today, I don't know where you're at. I don't know like what's going on in your life. I don't know like what kind of angst and level that you feel there. But I know that today, there's a, there's a step that you need to take. Whatever it may be, maybe today you need to find Jesus. Maybe today you're like, I'm, I'm kind of fuzzy on my relationship with Jesus. You know, tonight you can, you can actually begin to figure that out. On the connection card right there, all you have to do is just like, I'd love more information about salvation. And I'd love to talk with you and dialogue with you about what's going on in life. Maybe today you're just like, I just need to know Jesus more. Like I've found Jesus. I'm like, I know that I've found Jesus, but I just need to know him. I need to be like him. I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, just pattern my life after who he is. Now I'll encourage you to sign up on your connection card for groups. We'd love to let you know about groups because listen, this is this following Jesus and finding purpose. You can't do it in isolation. You need people to come alongside you. And that's what we want to provide in this community here at Yiggles. We want to give you that opportunity. Or maybe today you're like, listen, I, I know Jesus. I'm following Jesus. I just need to get better at sharing Jesus. And it's on your connection card as well. Join the team. Join the team here and help us do a better job of telling this incredible message to every person here in Huntington Beach and the surrounding areas. Because that's, that's what we're here to do. That's what you're going to do. So I, I, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. and Maybe tonight, just do some business with God. Just say, God, I, just show me what you want me to do. Just show me what step you want to take. Whatever it is, there's an opportunity for you tonight. You didn't come here by accident. You came here. And it's our hope that God would meet you today. And it's our hope that God would reveal what next step you need to take. Let's pray. God, we're, we're so grateful that you are a God that reveals himself to us. God, we don't have to like search and, and like find this, uh, this treasure map to try to figure out and decipher where you are. Lord, you, are, you have plainly articulated who you are. And so God, I pray that every single person in here would find you. God, I pray that they would be just changed by your presence and the power of Jesus and his work on the cross. God, I pray that this, every person in here would, be, would, would begin to know you, would be totally transformed from the inside out. And God, I pray that every person in here would be able to share you and share the hope that you have given us. Lord, I pray that whatever it is today, that they would take that next step. Lord, we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Well, hey, it's our hope that uh, after, if you had fill out your connection card, you want any more information about a next step that you need to take, or if you have any prayer requests, we'd love to be able to pray with you. There's some prayer requests uh, stuff on the back of your connection card as well. And so uh, make sure and, and turn that in. We're going to have, we're going to go out these doors in a second. Just drop them off at the next steps wall, that big white wall. Uh, we'd love to do that. But hey guys, we're so glad you came here tonight. And uh, right now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, head out these doors and we've got free boba available and we've got some live music and uh, we're gonna get some, uh, we got some heaters out there that look pretty but don't work super well. Um, but uh, anyway, we're so glad you came tonight. Just everyone, if you wanna head out these doors and follow Sierra there, uh, it'll be awesome. Again, thanks so much for being here guys. Hope to see you out there.